trying to understand what's going on there. Okay. Well, do you want to go ahead and start doing this now, or did you? Start through YouTube? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. what we're going to do is we're going to try to get a remote connection set up so that I can see what's on your screen and then start helping you with these issues. Okay. All right. Um, so I just pressed a button on my on my computer, which is recording our our conversation and our our work together. Okay. I've got a webcam on here too, but oh. I'm, uh, Camera ready. Uh, okay. Are you camera ready? Meaning, if we turn the camera on, is it okay with you? Sure. Okay, great. Then, um, what I'm going to have you do, do you know how to open an internet browser? So you can go to a website. Yes. If okay. You're talking about Chrome, huh? Yep. Yep, yeah. Chrome would be fine. So go ahead and open Chrome. Okay, now I want you to click in the address bar way at the top of the screen, and I'm going to uh -huh. tell you an address to go to. Okay. It's logmein123.com. I didn't see it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll pronounce it again, and then I'll spell it. Okay. Logmein123.com. L. Okay. It's, the spelling is L-O-G-M-E-I-N-1-2-3. Press your enter key. And that should take you to a page that's asking for a six digit code. Uh, six digit code, yes. Good. All right, the code is 418142. Yes. And look at the bottom left corner of your screen. You should see a little rectangle down there that shows the file it's downloading. Uh, no. Okay, let's wait for a moment. Is there another prompt on the screen wanting you to click on something? Start download. It hasn't done yet. Should I do it again? No, let's wait for a moment. Are you calling? That's, that's evidently what I do to my old one. Because people, you've got several things going at once that won't work. And I would expect it to instantly do what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> Are you calling me from an iPhone? Are you calling me from your cell phone? Marge, can you hear me? I cannot hear you, Marge. If you're... Whoops, we lost her. Let's see if she calls back. And if I drag this window down a little bit, I see in the background that her computer is starting to connect. Okay, I'm going to try calling her back. Hello? Hi, Marge. This is Doug. Hi, we got disconnected there. Yeah, we did. Um, so I'm... And do you have my phone number? Yeah, I have your phone number. Yeah. I just called you back. Okay, good. I wondered if you could do a repeat or something. 
Yeah. Is this your house phone or is this a cell phone? It's my house phone. House phone. And I've had it for 50 years. Okay. Um, so, do you have any message on the screen at this point? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, this website allows other people to control your PC. Okay, okay. All right, well, the connection gave up, so we're going to try it again. Um, you need to click up in the address bar and retype logmein123.com. We'll need to do a new six-digit number. Is there already? Do I erase it and start over? Uh, yes, because that way it'll force us to get back to the point where we'll ask you for a new six-digit number. Okay, so... No, 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 it's logmein123.com. Yeah, the new code is 694208. 208. 694208. That's right. Okay. Okay, now look in the bottom left corner of the screen. Do you see a little rectangle? Good. All right. Can you minimize the Google Chrome? Do you know what I mean by minimize? I know what you mean. You hit the little dot, the little line there. Yes, that's it. That little dash. Yeah, go ahead. And... The, the dash up there at the top. That's right. Go ahead and do that. Just the desktop. Okay. Then let's go back to Google Chrome. And in the bottom left in the bottom left corner, do you see any little rectangle that says log me in? Yes. Okay. It's a circle with a blue cross in it, a white cross in a blue circle. Okay. Click on that. Okay. Opening support. Good. Good. Click OK to allow yes. rescue to elevate your... Okay. Yes. Yes. Love me and rescue me. Yes. Connecting. Waiting for technician. Good. Here we go. Now I'm clicking a button on my side. Now there's probably another message on your screen. Yes. View your desktop and share control. Yes. Okay. Let's do that. Very good. All right. Do you see the mouse moving on your screen? Uh, yes. Yes, that's me. Oh, hi. So I'm able to see your screen now. All right, so I'm going to minimize this window for the log me in session. I'm going to minimize this window for Chrome. All right, and I see that you're on a Wi-Fi connection for your computer. That's fine. And then I'm going to go take a look at your printer. Okay, now. That means you're wireless. Okay, because I have a USB cord here that can connect, but when Keith put it in, he didn't connect it using it. Okay. And I, that, I suspect that might be why the computer doesn't know the printer's there. 
Okay, that is a different connection. This Wi-Fi ah. connection is what connects your computer to the internet. Okay. So that doesn't have anything to do with your connection to the printer. So okay. I'm going to go take a look at your printer setup by pressing the Windows key and the letter R, and then I'm going to type Control Printers. Now, a lot of what I'm saying, Marge, you don't need to remember or learn. A lot of what I'm saying, I'm saying for the purpose of the video that I'm creating okay. through my work. Yes. Series. Yes, I see that. Okay, so I'd like to just to just to check and be sure what is working. I'm going to try sending a test page to your printer. Is that okay? Sure. There's plain paper in the printer right now. Yep, there is. Okay, so I'm doing this by right clicking on the printer and then choose Printer Properties, and then click on this Print Test Page button and that should make a test page come out on your printer. And okay. Gives me this little message window telling me the test page has been sent. So you let me know if it prints. There's a place for me to say print test page. Do I hit that one? No, I already did that. I'm, I'm waiting for you to tell me You're that... You're waiting for it to do something. We're waiting for the printer to actually print. It should wake up on its own, but you said that you have a USB cable that's not connected right now. Is that right? Well, I take that back. My daughter and my grandson were both here yesterday, and my grandson held the thing up in his hand where it wasn't connected on either end, so my daughter ran over and plugged it in someplace. And my grandson, I think, is fairly um, knowledgeable on this stuff. My daughter... Um, has passed the age when, when this stuff comes automatically. Okay. So, <laughs> All right. Well, I'm seeing. So she struggles a little. I'm seeing here on this screen that there's five uh, print jobs that are waiting to print, and they have not yes, printed. Yeah, it didn't happen. Uh -huh. Yeah, it did not happen. So I'm gonna poke around a little bit more and, and check on some things. I'm gonna go look at the properties for I'm this. No. Photo paper wasn't okay. It wasn't. There's a there's two um, printing things. One was for photo paper, and the other is for regular paper. Okay. And I wanted to make sure the regular paper was able to be used, and it yeah. is. I and the printer is making funny noises now. Ah, uh, that's probably just because you've you've touched it, you've opened yeah, the tray or something. So. That's all. Because because I'm seeing here that this uh, printer port that's selected for your printer is not correct. So I know that's yeah. not going to work. And I suspect that somebody did that while they were trying to get it to work for you. So <laughs> I'm going to delete all of these print jobs that are sitting out here okay. because we're not going to be able to recover them. Um, and I'm going to say cancel all documents. Then I'm going to answer yes to canceling those. And now those are all gone. Now, can you look to see if that USB cable is connected between the printer and your computer? Okay, hold on a minute.
Okay, and I saw that happen because when you plugged in that cable, this printer right here went from a grayed out image to a, a dark image. That tells us that this one is now available for us to use uh, by virtue of plugging in that cable. This one used to look gray like this one does. Right. Okay. I think we're eventually going to delete that, but okay. not just yet. Um, when I float the mouse over this icon, I see a message that says status zero, document, zero documents in queue. A moment ago when I floated the mouse over that, it said offline. So it has apparently become online now. So I'm going to click my right mouse button on that icon, then come down to printer properties. And then come down to this print test page button. We're going to see if it'll print. Okay. And then I'm going to click this close button. And I'm going to click OK here. I think I can hear it working in the background. Yes, it is. Okay. We'll wait and see if it actually completes that test print. Okay. Okay. I'm imagining you probably opened the paper tray and maybe reseated the paper and then closed it. Right. I took the paper out, made sure it was square, and then put it back in again, yes. Excellent. Oh, now it wants me to load the 5x7 paper. That's what we were trying to do to make photos. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I today. see. I see. Well, hang on a second. Let me try something. I'm going to right click on this printer and click on see what's printing and it, there's nothing in the print queue so that means the print job has gone to the printer. Uh, there might be a continue button that you can press on the screen of that printer and what you're telling it by pressing continue is to go ahead and use whatever paper is in the tray. Yeah. It's doing something, but there's an OK to hit. Go ahead and do. No go ahead and press OK. Oh, now it says printing. Thirteen items. I mean, the th during the week I pressed it thirteen times and nothing happened. <laughs> Is the printer still making noises? No, it stopped. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to take a look at some other things here. On this general tab, I'm going to click Preferences and see if there is some kind of a paper choice nope. setting that we need to fix. Let's see. Printing shortcuts, defaults. 
Call the normal, both sides, paper type, HP photo paper. It says photo paper. Yeah, see, we were trying to do that. It, yeah. Okay, now plain paper. I'm going to change to plain paper, so I think that's going to make it stop prompting us. Okay. And let's see, there's paper type, plain paper, and paper source photo tray. Did you say there's two paper trays? Yes, sir. All right, and here I see a paper size. So and we, now you've got four by six. That's what I was trying to print yesterday. But okay, but in the main paper tray we have regular letter size paper, right? Right. Eight and a half and by eleven. eleven and a half or whatever it is. All right. So I'm going to change these settings to the normal settings. Take a look here. Portrait, that's good. HP Real Life Technologies. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm going to leave that check mark there for now. And I'm going to try this reset to factory defaults. Okay, I like those settings. So then I'm going to Click all the way out of those windows and then go back into them just to be sure that all of that has been properly selected. And here I'm going to, let's see, well, before I do that, I'm going to come and open this See What's Printing window. And then I'll come to this printer menu and choose Properties. Now this allows me to click on the print test page button and I'll be able to see the print job show up over here. So here that goes. Print test page and there's the print job and if it prints then that print job should disappear after a few moments. I can close this window. Marge is the printer making any noises? Not at all. Okay. The screen says that photo, photo, photo paper, and we don't want it to do that. That's right. We don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, screen. at one point, I think you said something about 13 jobs or something like that. Did... Okay, I canceled that. Good, good. And on the screen, now it's making noises. It is making noises? All right. Yeah, I did. I just saw that disappear. It printed. It printed the test page? Yes. Outstanding. All right, so let's close this and close this. Now that we have a functional printer, I'm going to delete this one that we know does not work. Okay. And I'm inclined to delete this one also because I think this was another attempt and yes. fixing things. Before I do that, I'm going to take a look at a couple things. Since this name is a little bit different, I'm suspecting it's using a different printer driver, and I'd like to see what that is. So with right-click oh, on the okay. printer icon, then choosing Printer Properties, I'm going to go to Advanced, and I see here HP NV Photo 7800 Series PCL3. And then I'm going to compare that to this one. Printer Properties, Advanced, HPMV Photo 78 Series PCL3. It says the same thing. This one that's working is on this USB 001 port. This one over here with a right click and then Printer Properties, and then go to Ports. I see it's using a WSD port, which is a, a, a valid type of port name, but it's not what we're using. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this printer as well. <laughs> we like deleting extra clutter. Yes. Yeah, clean things up. Okay, so now we know we can uh, print. 
Now you said that you're specifically trying to print pictures. Yes, because it seems the rest of it seems to work, but we haven't been able. I haven't been able to print a picture using the photo tray. Okay, can you show me where you want to print photos from? Yeah, screen? I'm watching you. Okay. I'm thinking I might know where you're trying to go to, but I'm waiting yeah. to see if you can find. Okay, good. Yes. See, I would like to print this picture. Okay. Go ahead and right click on that picture. Uh -huh. And then let's see, do we get, yeah, try that. Let's just see if that works, if we get lucky. Now this is going to print on eight and a half by eleven letter size, and we'll go ahead and do that just to see if we get that much to work. Okay. So on the bottom left corner of that window, there's a print button. Go ahead and click that. Yes. And we'll wait and see if we get something at the printer. And those others, this other one was the one we tried through yesterday to get my uncle Frank sent to his granddaughter. Okay. Is the is the printer making any noises? Not at all. All right. Is there any message I can try on? To wake it up. Um, no, let's not do that. Let's just oh, okay. wait and see if anything happens. Is there any message on the printer's screen? Well, okay, my my phone kind of beeped while you were saying what the printer d was displaying. What did you say the printer was displaying? There are several screens, and, uh, and, okay, well. Yeah, I'm kind of losing you. Okay, let's, um, I'm going to go a different direction with this. I'm going to press the Windows key and the letter R and go back into Control Printers and see what that tells us. I'm going to right click on the printer and choose See What's Printing. And it doesn't show anything as they're printing. Now I'm going to drag this window over to the side and then minimize this printer screen. And then I'm going to try printing again. I'm going to watch to see if a print job shows up over here. I'll try this drop down lot list for selecting a printer and verify, yeah, that's the name of the printer. And then click on print. Whoops, where did that? There, there it shows. What did you say? Marge, what did you just say? I said you woke up my printer, I think. It's making noise. Oh, good. Yeah, my, my phone seems to be cutting out once in a while. I don't know if it's on my end or your end. So if I ask you to repeat what you just said, that's all I'm asking for is to repeat the last thing you said. I heard picture my and then you cut out. I don't know. It's Yeah. I, I get those terms mixed up. I'm not sure. But it, yeah, it came up. It came up the long way like it shows there. Did it print? It did print, yes. Oh, it did print. Okay, but it printed the wrong way. Okay, that's fine. It did print the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to that again. It was this one. So I'll right click yes. and then print. And then right here where it says orientation landscape, I'm going to change that to portrait 
and we'll try printing okay. that again and see if it comes out the right way. So, okay. Okay, now before I actually click print, I'm going to bring up that uh, window so we can watch what's going on again to see what's printing. There. Minimize this window. Uh, I see when I when I click on this window to make it active we lose that what's printing window so I'd like to keep this visible on the screen so the way I need to do that is I need to uh, back up here a little bit I'm going to cancel from here this window is maximized right now so it won't allow me to see that what's printing window so I'm going to restore down by clicking that button and then move this over here. So here is that print queue window is what we call it. Now I'm going to right click on the picture you want, choose print, change this to portrait, and then click on print and watch to see the job show up here. Mm, hasn't shown up yet. Is the printer making noises? No. All right. I'm going to try this print button again. There. I think the first time I clicked on that print button, it just didn't take. Because when I click on that print button, that window is supposed to go away. And this time it did. Okay. And it's pretty. Great. It's a picture of my grandparents' wedding in 1884. Oh, wow. I've got I've got a bunch of old pictures like that. Now, I um my my dad passed away last month. And I have possession of all of his old photos and movies and such. And we got stuff that's probably back in the 1800s. People have no idea who they are. <laughs> oh, dear. That's a shame. Yeah, I've just been going through mine and labeling them. <laughs> well, I think, I think we have pieces of information here and there. I, we've got a family tree that one of my uncles made up for us that goes back quite a long ways um so i think we may have a lot of the names of photos we have Good. so yeah, anyway the thing to do is to write grandma and grandpa on it because you'd be surprised how many can answer that name in a, for a few generations that's right <laughs> that doesn't help <laughs> so that did that did print correct yes it did okay mm -hmm. now did we want to try to print on a better quality paper Okay, so this photo paper, is it a different physical size? Yes, I want to play 4x6. Okay, so do you actually have 4x6 inch paper? Yeah, it came with the printer, hold on. All right. Oh, that's curious. Um, is it? Oh, it stopped. So we need to make it go to the the print tray again. 
Okay, well, ha hang on. Let, let me let me ask you a couple questions. Don't click on anything. Okay. So when you put in that photo paper, the machine, the printer probably started making noises, and you might have thought that it was trying to print. Right. But it, did it actually print anything? No. Okay, I think that's okay. You just put in some new paper, and it made some noises just to rec for it to recognize what you put in. So I don't okay. think it actually was trying to print. Now, the um, when we printed that uh, picture, did it fill up the paper or did it print? Yes. Okay, and it did. Yes, it was eight by 11, eight and a half by 11. Okay, so now you have the, what, four inch by six inch paper in the uh, photo paper four tray? Four by six paper, yes. Okay, so I'm going to right click on this photo and then select print and we're going to see what I'd we like it to be to, to, to cut off the, the bottom on the top there so that it will make a larger picture not the whole okay i understand now yeah, okay. are, you, are you saying cut off this white space here no i'm talking about the top and the bottom like like it shows okay. there okay Oh, I see what you're saying. Kind of like the way this image yes, is showing exactly. with the oval kind of chopped off. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, we might have to do a little extra stuff to make that happen, but let's take this in increments. Um, okay. So I'm going to start with changing the paper tray because that photo paper is actually in a different tray than the regular yes, paper tray. Okay. So I'm going to choose photo tray. Now, before I click on that, notice right below the mouse, right below the mouse error, arrow, where it says letter, 8.5 inch by 11 inch. When I click on photo tray, I'm hoping that it's going to show us the dimensions of the paper that you actually have in the photo tray. So okay. here I go with a click. It didn't, but there's a there's a menu button here, a drop down list button. So I'm going to click on that and see if I can select the size of paper that you have in that photo paper tray. And I'm scrolling down to see if there are some. Yeah, there's we saw some there. I'm just getting I'm going all the way through that list quickly to get an orientation to what's in there. So here's. Uh, area where there's looks like just yeah, one four by great. six inch all right so I'm gonna click on that now when I did that it kind of resized redrew this area all right All right, that's fine. So I don't, I, I don't see where it says it. Okay. You don't see where the box says four by six. I don't see on the box where it says that at all. All right. It doesn't look four inches at the other six. It doesn't look four inches to me. But do you have a a ruler or a tape measure? Yes, I'm going to. Okay, this says six inches long. Okay. Uh, so just to explain on the YouTube video, I just momentarily lost my connection to your computer, but then got it back. Okay. okay. So now we have paper size. We need it's not plain paper. Not yeah, wait paper. a minute. Wait. Wait a minute, though. Let me. Let me. Let. Let, let me stick with this because there's something else we need to do before we fix that. Do you, do you notice the way this is kind of laid out horizontally? So this looks like six inches wide by four inches tall. Right. We need okay. that photo, portrait at the top. Yeah, so I'm going to come up here and try portrait. Okay. And see if that redraws okay. the way we expect to see it. Okay? That would work. Yeah. yeah. That would work. But right now we we don't have that oval cut off the way that you asked well, for. Well, that's okay. Okay. 
Uh, so then we'll come over here to the paper type and probably HP photo papers will be the thing for us to choose. Right, that's what it is. Yeah, it came with the printer. Now, the only reason to do this is that you have an inkjet printer and it will deposit a different amount of ink on the paper based upon which selection we have here because photo paper will respond to that ink differently than plain paper. So that's the only reason that choice is there. If we were to leave it on plain paper, it would work. It would still print and it might look just as good, but this is a more appropriate choice. Sometimes it matters. Since we don't know for sure whether it's going to matter for you, we're going to go ahead and choose that. Now, it's going to go on a genealogy thing. It needs to be the good paper. Okay, that's if fine. Possible. Now let's look at what other choices we have here. There's a scroll bar right here. I'm going to drag the scroll bar down and see if there's anything else we'd like oh. to change. So here's a photo size full page. So here's some choices we can make the photo size different. Now I wonder what would happen if we said we want the photo size to be 5.7 inches even though we're printing on 4 by 6. I wonder if that might, it might yeah. blow it up yeah. larger and, and crop that oval shape for us. No, we got a message here saying photo doesn't fit on the selected paper, so it doesn't like that at all. Okay. Well, we can't trick it that way. Then we have page margins is set for normal or uniform. Now notice as we look at this, see this kind of gray area out here? It looks like we've got the boundary of the paper is actually wider than the image, wider than the photo. So I'm going to, I don't think this is going to be our solution, but I'm going to click on uniform just to see what happens. Okay. All right. So that didn't appear to change anything. I'm going to go back to normal. Now, coming down here to this one for fit, I'm wondering if this might be helpful to us. There's fill page or shrink to fit. Interesting. I'm going to try a couple things here. I'm going to click on shrink to fit. There it did shrink down the top. See, we got a little bit of a border on the top and bottom now. And then I'm going to try changing the photo size to be larger. No, it still just doesn't like that at all. So I'll come back to here. So I don't think this shrink to fit is a good choice for us because on normal it is actually taking up more of the paper. And I do notice down here on this thumbnail image of the picture, we do see the left edge of the oval, and over here we we don't. So that's that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Now here's a button for more settings. Let's see what we get there. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Yeah. Now what this is is this is the. HP Photo Smart software up here on the title bar of this window it says HP Smart. So this is giving us some additional settings. So I'm kind of glancing through this to see if there's anything. Or having bright borders, which we don't want. Yeah, at the top there. Um, what are you saying at the top? It's that there are three things: general, everyday printing, two-sided. And photo printing white borders. Oh. And we don't need that. And okay. Lock, so it won't All right. I see what you're saying. Well, right now we're set on factory defaults. Um, these other choices would be for other types of printing. And right. we don't want the border. However, this one is print settings for photos. While we're on factory defaults, um, we might not be optimized for photos, but I'm not convinced of that. Down here we see the paper size 4 by 6 we see photo papers, we see the photo tray. Print quality is normal. Let's do best. Okay, that'll take longer for it to print usually, 
if we do best uh, and it will use up more ink typically and yeah, well, for photos it's okay all right and then we have a choice here print in grayscale uh, but this photo doesn't have any grayscale so it's anything it's showing in grayscale we want it to use color oh, okay. um, and orientation and what's the monochrome there was a choice yeah that would be uh, to just use uh, uh, basically black ink black ink I see. And okay. various shades of black would be great this does have different shades so it would be better yeah yeah, that's right. This isn't a color photograph. That's a good point. And it is quite possible that if you were to try both the color and probably grayscale, the image would come out looking a little different, and you might find that you like one over the other. And I do not know which that would be. However, for uh, for experimental purposes, if you wanted to experiment with those, then you probably would want to use either draft or normal so that you don't use up as much e ink in those experiments. Uh, we don't want to print on both I sides. I want to put in the album. All right. The picture is in a frame and it's on the wall, but I was going to put it in the album, which, you know. All right. So it's, I'm not calling it an experiment. I'm calling it the finished product. All right. Reverse page order. Yeah, none of those were really of interest to us. Oh, borderless printing. Um, let's see. Well, it looks to me like when this line is purple, that would in mean that this feature is turned on. So that would mean borderless. So I think that's what you what you want. It's a little difficult to say that that's what this means, but I'm I'm guessing I yes. I was seeing the white border around the edges. I would have translated it a different way, but you had more experience. Yeah, but we're not. We haven't selected this choice. We're on yeah, this okay. choice. So okay. these are the detail settings of the choice that we're on right now. So I'm going to click OK there. That takes us back to here. But see, we don't see a border up here. See up here where I'm pointing? We don't yeah, see a border see. there. And do you see this light gray line around here? Yes. I think that's the edge of the paper. I don't think your f original photo is a 4 by 6 photo. It looks to me like it's too narrow on across the width. It's Yeah. And, uh, and I didn't think I'd be able to do it. He took it with his cell phone and then sent it to me. So this is a picture of a picture of a picture. Oh, you you took a picture of the photo that's hanging on your wall. Right. I see. That's yeah. It looks like we have a little bit of reflection on the glass of the. F uh, well, I do it mine, and there was a terrible reflection. It didn't work at all. So he did it with his. All right. I don't All right. I'm a terrible amateur at this. Well, I think we've done all the adjustments that make sense. I think we're ready to try printing this. Okay. Okay. Um, is this a one-time deal for you, or are you, are you going to print other pictures? I'm going to print other pictures, but not using best quality. Not using best quality. Okay. All right. Um, all right, here we go. Clicking print. And there's the print job showing up. My old printer was also Hewlett Packard and a photo one. It wasn't this number, it was a much smaller one. So I printed a lot of pictures before my birthday and uh, other th other things, you know, I had used the photo a lot, but the new one I hadn't used it at all. As you see, I didn't know what I was doing. It is printing, but it's slowly. 
Yeah, it would be slow because uh, the high quality. Good. Good. It's, uh, it is sliced a little bit differently. Like, it's uh, more of a space here than here, but I'm going to accept it. It's fine. Okay. It'll do just fine. I'm going to take a quick little exploration on something else here. I'm going to right click on that picture and let's see. Does it have copy print add to favorites and to no I'm gonna try open and file explorer and here's that picture I'll try right clicking on it there and then edit with photos do I want that one or paint 3D I'm gonna try with photos and Uh, yeah, see, there you have it, uh, showing the full circle. And it's right. chopped off some of the oval. Um, on the yeah, on that other screen we saw it chopped off. Did this it? It's quite plain. This part over here, uh, it isn't. And the picture even on the wall is not that plain, it seems like. This is some sort of a piece of furniture in the uh, studio where they had the picture taken. Oh, this, this piece yeah. right here? Yeah. Are you saying that's actually a reflection in the photo, or is that... No, no, that's good, but in the, the one hanging in the wall, it's not even that plain. Okay. Now, I'm going to try something here. Oh, chopping this down, sure. Yeah. Now, the dimensions of that is not um, the same as a 4 by 6 so we probably need to come in here also trying to get to 4, four by 6 dimensions. So this would cause it to show the people better. Yes. Now, here we're act I'm actually cutting out a little bit of that oval on the sides. Now, let's do we, does this give us any numerical dimensions? Let's see. Original four by three. Oh, there, when I selected four by three, it just automatically resized it a little bit more. So, uh, uh, let's see. Six by four I think is equivalent to four by three, isn't it? Uh what I did Okay. You know, a man standing there, that was my grandfather and I knew him when I was a kid. But he oh. was completely bald. <laughs> <laughs> same dimensions but very close 
Now, let's see. Um, what happens if I hold my mouse down? Yeah, I can actually see. I can actually move that oh. around within the frame that we've created. Great. So uh, I'm trying to kind of position that a little more. Eye appeal. And you're doing this by how? Holding down the left mouse button. Would you like to try that yourself? You put your mouse inside the picture area and then hold down your left mouse button and drag the mouse oh. around. Oh, that's marvelous. Yes. That's great. Okay. Okay. And a little thing that they gave us, uh, let's see, wow, what happened to that grid that was there a moment ago? Yeah. As you're moving it around, do you see that grid? Yeah. Kind of like a tic-tac-toe grid? Yes. So it would allow you, for instance, to see where the faces are positioned on those, on those grids. Uh, that may or may not be of, of use, but in photography, there's a thing called the rule of thirds uh -huh. where um, where con um, composing the photo, it's good to have things uh, um, lined up with these thirds. And I'm not explaining that very well. I'm not going to attempt to explain that very well in this conversation because that's a longer conversation. But uh in this picture, I think you're just better off just pushing this around, pushing this around. So it's okay. Well, that's the reason why it gave us. That's the reason it gave us that grid. So, are you happy with that position? Do you want to try yes, printing? I am. Okay. I wonder what will happen if we do a four by six like that. Well, that's what I'm thinking to do. Um, now I'm looking around to see what are our options because um, I think we're going to have to save this and then print it from the saved file. I don't think we're going to print directly from this program, which is probably a good idea and you, a good idea not to. So um, we're about to save this if you're happy with that sizing and positioning. Yes, I am. All right. So down here in the bottom right, it says Save Copy. I'm going to okay. click on that. And that took us back over to here. Now, up here in the upper left corner, we see G and G Austin and the number 2 in parentheses. So I think that number okay. 2 is indicating the copy. So now we've got a printer icon up here in the upper right. I'm going to click on that. Did you want to put in another piece of photo paper or do you want to do a test? It's, it's in there. It's already. All right. So here I'm clicking on the printer icon. And we've got it set as portrait. Uh -huh. um, it's set on main tray right now. I'm going to change that to photo tray. And then I'm going to change the paper size. Now we're having to do this again because we did not change the default settings for your printer. So anytime we go to print a photo on that photo paper, we're going to have to make these changes. So here's four by okay. six. And now we see that it's taking up that um, full width. It's interesting. We're still seeing this border. The, the, the photo that we printed before, did it? have a border on the left and right sides? No. No? It filled the paper? Yes. Oh, it filled the 4 by 6 inch paper. Okay, that's great. Um, and then for paper type, we'll change to photo papers. Now, let me point out, there's they allow you to choose more specifically what kind of paper you have. If you had a paper with a matte finish or a glossy uh -huh. finish, or other specific photo papers. I think this is glossy. I'm not sure. It looks, yes, it's glossy. It is glossy. Mm -hmm. So it's not a brochure. Other glossy inkjet. I think that the paper you have is actually HP photo papers that came with the printer. I think this is probably going to be our best choice. 
Yes. Because there's not, none of those other choices look better. And I have a, one that just like this that was my other printer that I had to purchase, and it was exactly the same thing. Okay. So the photo size is... hundred sheets of it, so it means I used a hundred of them, and now I'm on the list. I had to open a new package, so... All right. But see, that was my other computer. I was... I had it a long time, and I was used to it. And okay. this one, I'm... All right. So we hear page margins. Yeah, page margins we used normal last time, and it and we were happy with how it came out. And yes. we and we had uh, fill page. Yeah, that was the best. And then on more settings, I don't think we changed anything in there that we cared about. Yeah, we did. I think we did choose print quality best, and that's still there. Yeah. All right. Are you ready to print? Yes. All right. Clicking print. Oh, it's doing it. Yeah. So that my daughter, my youngest daughter, born in uh, 1967, was a uh, hundred years. They were, he was born in 1916. She was born. In, I mean, 1860. She was born in 1863. So it's a long space of time in there. Yes, it's very good. Uh, So this little piece of yellow in the bottom right corner on the screen that I'm pointing to, you don't see that no, on that's the... that's gone. That's gone. Interesting. Uh-huh. Because... And the ones on the other side are much less than that. Oh, interesting. Than shown there. And it actually printed out to the edges? Actually, it's just past her elbow. The, the line is right here. Oh. It's just past her elbow. So this is just a tiny bit. And did it actually print out to the edge of the paper? Okay, okay. Um, yes. So, but you're not right sure. Here. You're not sure which one of those you like better. I think I like the one where it enlarges the people. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, is there some is there some content on the on the photo that's actually a reflection from the glass on the picture frame? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Um, if you were wanting to try to get even better, the next thing that you would do is to actually take the photo out of the frame and scan it. Because yeah. I think your printer is actually a scanner, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's a lot of extra work. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm satisfied with so, if you're satisfied with this, then I think that's a good thing to stay with. Yes, that's very good. So let, let me 
Let me point out yeah. this um, G and G Austin is the name of this file. If you yeah. go ahead and close this window by clicking the X in the upper right corner, we're gonna go have a look at what this did to your photos. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna. I can, I can add photos to this now, and it adds a whole other document folder for each photo. Instead of putting them all on one, you know, like this one uh, is a picture of John and me at my sister's 50th wedding anniversary, which was 12 years ago. So, um, here are the pictures of the Jerome kids up in the um, Yosemite two years ago. Um, and a great grandchild, you know, quite a while ago. I'm, I'm getting, I would like to be able to put them in different documents, you know, if I could. So the recent ones are in one, and I guess I have no idea what that one is. I have no idea where that one came from. <laughs> it's not one of All right. Well, why don't you close that and could how do you, how do you get rid of it? the X in the upper right corner? Okay, but that just it'll still be there. Well, yeah, but then we'll do something else. Okay. Now, if you go right click on that picture, uh huh, and then third from the bottom is the word delete. Just click that, and that'll delete that picture. Okay. Now, would you mind? Yeah, this, yeah, go ahead. Would you mind double clicking on that face? Uh, which one? The one of you and John. This one. Yeah. 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 Go ahead and double click on that, so we can show the people watching on the YouTube who <laughs> you are. Now, okay, act, let's see. Let's see what. Does this does that make it? Oh yeah. Yeah, and I, it's a little fuzzy though. Yeah, it's a little fuzzy. Yeah. Good enough. Okay. All right. Um what else do we want to do? Um here's an HP shortcut. We can you can right click on that one. You huh? can right click on that and choose delete. And delete? Yeah. <laughs> he was 18. He's tall and skinny. Yeah. <laughs> he had just graduated from high school then. Now he's been almost a year doing his college work on the computer at home. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is not what he elected to do. Right, right. All right. Well, have we done enough for now? Can you show me where that 200 pages is? Yes. Can I get rid of all this? Yeah. See Roots Magic over here? Okay.
four children and grandchildren. My brother, he's got grandchildren, and my sister and her family. And so um, these all have pages to them too, you know. So how in the world do you said something like that? Okay, don't 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 close it. Don't close it. All right, so did she want a copy of the entire program with what you have in here, or does she I don't want know. to? I have to ask her. Okay, let me take a look at something here. I I have the mouse for a minute. We can't both move the mouse at the same time. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. I won't touch it. Okay. So then, if we go here to reports, there's print a report, and there's charts, wall charts, timeline charts. See, I'm thinking that maybe this person actually just wants a, like a printed version of the family tree. Oh, I could, I could do that, especially for hers. See, she's my my grandparents. She's descended from the uh, which child? Third child, I think. Uh, of my grandparents. No, it's not. I think she's the sixth child of my grandparents or her grandparents. She's a year. Let's see, well, yeah, she's. Okay, well, let's let's just experiment a little bit here. Um, so, what start person would she be interested in? Can I use the? Yeah, go ahead. The chart. Karen? My grandparents, we took the picture of, but then we could start there and do list. She's got a son. Well, if we did Karen reports and pedigree chart, I think this would show us her, what's the right word? Oh, okay. An ancestors, maybe? Um, yeah. So gener generations per, uh, per page. Yeah. There's one you can do six generations. Yeah. Yeah. So here's. Karen right here, right? Right. So this is showing people her her, her I could email that to her. Uh, that page. Right. And you already know how to do that then? Uh I did on my other one. Well <laughs> here's an email choice right here. Now that may or may not be Oh yeah. That may or may not be set up on your new computer to use your email software. So let's see what happens when we click on that. Which format? She's in, she's, she has an email on my and my and uh, my address book. So. All right. So here's. To Karen. Yeah. So here is the report. Yeah. So this started a new email from you, and you would put in who you want to send it to. Yeah. So that would work. We're not going to do that okay, right now. Okay, let's try Karen. Let's, okay. Well, we don't, she would have been there, so we don't need to actually yeah, okay. send it. And then I can go from Silas back, just the, just the generation without all the second cousins and stuff. Because I have some, quite a few from this man, uh, his, his descendants, and uh, which would be my grandfather's little sisters and... Uh, there's a picture of him as a young man with his beautiful wavy hair and stuff, which I think is hilarious because he was bald as a beer ball when I knew him. So, he had six little sisters and they all had families, so they're the ones I correspond with a lot. So we're looking at, we've got Karen here. Is Eugene a sibling to Karen? No, that's her father. Oh, Eugene is a father. So then down here, Margaret is the mother? Yes, she's my cousin. Okay, then... When we go out this direction, who's on this level? Those are her mother's parents. And oh, okay. The grandparents that we took the pictures of. Oh, okay. So them. Margaret, 
Margaret's father was Marion and mother yeah. was Harriet. Yeah, and then this is mother and or father and mother for Harriet and yeah. going on. Okay. So that that makes sense. That's a uh, what they call a pedigree chart. Um, yes, it is. I was confused when I first saw this. I was thinking of it backwards. Well, if you're not doing genealogy, it's a little different. <laughs> I understand. But if you do ge genealogy, anybody who sees it, oh, yeah, so they know exactly what it is. But yeah. See, she doesn't do genealogy either, so. All right. Yeah. So your question was how to give her a copy. Hey, Marge, can I get you to can I get you to hold on for a moment? I need to answer. Sure. Hello, this is Doug. Hey, it's Adam over at Clawson Honda. Marge, are you still there? Yes. Yeah, thank you. That was a shop calling about my car. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so good. Um, I can I can let you go now. I appreciate it now. Yeah. Probably All right, very good. Well, that's that's what I'm wanting to do more of with this uh, YouTube channel. So don't hesitate to call back. You are not being a nuisance or trouble. I, I want to be able to do more of this, and you will not be getting a bill. Yeah, but you should. Nope. Nope. This is, this, this is the whole idea behind a YouTube channel is I'll be making my money through the uh, advertisements that get displayed with my videos. So in, in exchange for your willingness to to let me record these interactions, I I will be doing this for free for just about anybody. Well, that's amazing. I appreciate it very much. All right. You're welcome. All right. You have a good day, Marge. Thank you. You too, Doug. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. So I think that'll be a wrap for this video. If you would like to request a session with me, it doesn't cost you any money. As long as you're willing to let me make a YouTube video out of the help that I provide for you, I welcome you to send me a message. The ways that you can do that is you can send me an email at dougbetts at livewindowstraining.com. Just tell me what you want help with and give me some way to contact you. Or you can uh, check in with me at 6 p Well, let's see, today is July 27th, 2020. Currently, I am doing uh, making myself available every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 6 p.m. You can join in on a Zoom session, or you can call me by phone during that time frame. The uh, Zoom session ID is 559-500-3498 and the password is 555555555 bunch of fives six fives the number five six times that's the passcode for that zoom session and if you want to call me by telephone the phone number is the same as that zoom session id meaning it's 559 five zero zero three four nine eight all right so i hope that was useful for you have a great day goodbye